I'm David Hazard, author, publishing consultant, and founding director of Ascent, an international prep school for authors. We help aspiring writers develop their books from concept to finish, and we help to launch careers in publishing. Today, we're going to be talking with Linda Sittig, one of our clients. Linda, good to be here with you today. What inspired you to write this novel? Well, I was doing some research on um, our family's Civil War textile factory in Philadelphia, and in the process, I ran across names of ancestors that were buried in the uh, family cemetery vault, and one name kind of just jumped out at me because um, the woman was buried as Mrs. James Nolan hmm. with only her husband's identification, who happened to be my great-grandfather. And my thought, David, was, God, how unfair to be buried <laughs> with your husband's name and not your own. So I got intrigued, and I started researching who this Mrs. James Nolan was. So, so you didn't even have a first name? No. Knew nothing about her except she'd been married to my great-grandfather. Uh, and it took a while to track her down, um, did a lot of research, and I found that her name was Ellen Canavan Nolan. And the surprising thing I learned was that she had played a significant role in how my great-grandfather achieved his wealth. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but on so she gets, she gets Mrs. James Nolan. Yeah, no <laughs> credit. No and, credit, okay. Um, I started looking at the documentation on his factories, and her name was never mentioned, even though she had been instrumental in how his success had been achieved. And I thought to myself, okay, this is not fair. And it was a story begging to be told. So that's how, it, that's how the book got started. Oh, this seems to be kind of a, a, a strong theme for you because you write a blog. I uh, do. And, and the subject of the blog is? Strongwomeninhistory.wordpress.com. And the blog came about because of Ellen. I, I was so impressed with her tenacity, and I thought nobody even knew what an amazing woman she had been. So I started this blog, and once a month, I feature another strong woman in history who made a difference, but who never got many accolades for it. Um, and the blog has just grown and grown and grown, and I've been doing it for oh, about a year now, I guess. Oh, I see. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, tell us briefly what your book is about. All right. Ellen Canavan was a young uh, Irish immigrant, and she wanted to, uh, her father had died, and she wanted to, in his absence, achieve the success the father had never been able to do. Mm, I see. Um, and then what, what happened was she had to struggle to overcome the limitations that were on female entrepreneurs of the 1860s. And she did that, amazingly, by creating this special cloth, and it was used by the federal government for the Civil War soldiers' uniforms. But at the same time, she's fighting her own battles against prejudice and jealousy and deceit. And I think the biggest thing she had to learn was that she realized she had to learn to play a game where men made all the rules. And she had to, um, you know, fight a lot of, a, a lot of hard battles to, to win and succeed. Who who do you think will be most attracted to this story? What what readers will be most attracted to this story today, do you think? I think it resonates with any woman that has had to fight battles to get where you know, where she is in life or who wants to take the world by storm, you know, and make a difference and break traditional barriers because um, Ellen's family was opposed to what she was doing, society hmm. was opposed to what she was doing. Uh, even though it was 1860, I think it's very relevant today. I, I, it, it, it is. It sounds as though it really is. Uh, did you make any interesting uh, discoveries while you were researching or writing this book? Well, I did. Uh, two different ones, actually. The um, first thing I learned is when you write historical fiction, like my book is, you have to check and recheck and recheck your facts. I see, And yes. I came to a point where I was done. I was excited the book was finished, and I was leaping, leafing through some Civil War articles one last time, and this tiny sentence jumped out, and it said on April 21st, the, all the bridges north, uh, all the railroad bridges north of Baltimore were destroyed so that the Union Army couldn't get to the south. Hmm. And I read that, and I thought, I uh, better go check. So I ran to the manuscript, went to the scene I was thinking of, and lo and behold, this is what I had written. 
Ellen is on a train leaving Washington, D.C., going through Baltimore on her way north to Philadelphia, April 21st. Physically oh. impossible. <laughs> so I had to scrap the scene, start rewriting, and it took another entire chapter to get her back to Philadelphia on accurate transportation. So that was my, my first kind of uh, awakening. The second one had to do with a computer. Like a lot of, like a lot of other writers, um, I love doing the research. I love doing the writing. The, the technology part is there because it has to be. So I had 10 beta readers, 10 readers who read the manuscript, and they all commented on different things. And um, several of them had said my original characters, you probably remember, were James Nolan, my great-grandfather, and Joseph Canavan, Ellen's brother. And the beta readers said, oh, it's too confusing, Joseph and James, two names beginning with J's. And so I thought, all right, I can change Joseph's name to the family nickname, Patrick. No problem. So I went to um, the thing on the computer that says, like, autocorrect, and I said, <laughs> everywhere you see Joseph, now put in Patrick. Two seconds, it's done. Later, about a day or two later, I'm reading through the manuscript, and all the Josephs have now been changed to Patrick's, and I come to the scene where Ellen and her mother are arguing with each other, and the mother yells at her and says, Jesus, Mary, and Patrick. And I start <laughs> laughing because as a Catholic, you would know it's Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. But the computer had wiped out all the Josephs and turned them to Patrick. So that was kind of funny. I learned a, I learned a hard lesson on the this computer. This is why we need careful human attention yes. to our work. Just trusting computers <laughs> no, doesn't do it. No, doesn't absolutely do it. not. Well, uh, Linda, I, I have been coaching authors for almost 35 years now. And I am aware that most of the time, uh, the process of writing a book has an impact on the author and uh, causes them to make discoveries or make changes. W was that true for you in the course of writing uh, Ellen's story? Yeah, absolutely, David. I think that um, in the process of writing Ellen's story and rewriting it and rewriting it, I became very drawn to her as a very strong woman. And I think because of that, I have become a stronger woman. I feel that I speak out now more on my convictions where before mm. I might have been, you know, you're brought up to be raised to, you know, be polite and to be nice and not to say anything that would offend everybody, anybody. And I won't say that I'm offensive, but if something is really bothering me, I speak out about it now. And before writing Ellen's book, I'm not so sure I would have been that way. So you found some strength for your voice. Absolutely. I see. Okay. Absolutely. Excellent. If there's one thing that you want to leave with your readers uh, when they finished reading Ellen's story, what would that be? Well, I think that if Ellen Canavan, a real live human being, um, could break the glass ceiling in 1860 and become a very successful female entrepreneur, then I think that that's a message that any woman should be encouraged to pursue her dream and to never, ever give up. That would be the message. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. You. Uh, thank you, Linda. Thank you, David. And thank you for coaching me through the process because really without that, Ellen would have only been a nice family memoir. Oh, well, you're welcome. It was a most enjoyable process. And I learned so much about uh, the world of the 1860s and about uh, women entrepreneurs. So thank you. Thank you, David. We've been talking today with Linda Sittig. If you want to find her online... You can find her at lindasittig.com. My name is David Hazard, founding director of Ascent. If you would like to learn more about our coaching services, about our uh, award-winning product design services, you can find us on the web at itsyourlifebethere.com.